Right, this is the first of the build videos for the I-67 Japanese torpedo bomber. Uh, I began this by adding some internal detailing. It was really just this this bomber's this aircraft got a lot of glazing on it, um, so I just wanted to dress up the interior a little bit. Uh, and really, it's not that much is going to be seen. Um, I want to display this also wheels up on a flying base. So for that, I've added um, metal tube into a um, evergreen strip block and all super glued and cemented into place. So the uh, stand rod, which is a bit of brass rod, will go into there and that will be a good solid uh, amount that's gone in added in um the uh fuselage they're not ribs um frames sorry frames now these aren't meant to be precise because to be honest with you when it's all closed up you're hardly going to see anything it's literally just some indication for what you can see through the glazing when you have a pier inside um, if this was a helicopter, which is more open, then you tend to, yeah, it has to be um, more precise. But this is really just to give this the sense of an internal structure. Um, done this for both sides. With the aircraft being displayed uh, with the wheels up, um, the uh, aft tail wheel indicates from the drawings that it was boxed off so I just put in a block there and uh, hit it with a, a coat of um, cockpit green uh, IJ and Imperial Japanese Navy now I'm hoping that the Imperial Japanese Army or whoever used this uh, use a similar coat so that seems about right for this It'll have a little bit of dry brushing, but I'm not going to go overboard on it. It's just to give it a little bit of, um, just a starting point, give it a little bit of extra character, uh, cover over some areas that I would see as being see-through. So where you've got the uh, wings joining that area, it would just show the horrible socket joint, so that's been covered over. So if you do have a pier inside and you glimpse in, it doesn't look basically like a plastic kit too much I didn't put in the stringers maybe it's something I should have done uh, which run fore to aft I just put in the uh, the frames and that's just busy up a little bit also painted the inside of the bay doors now the uh, bot the torpedo itself will hang from mounts actually outside of the aircraft so the bomb bay doors anyway remain closed you can see those frame elements there for for it and this is, I mean, the internal detail is not meant to be precise or anything. It's meant to be an indication of something inside. That's what it's aimed for. It doesn't pretend to be any more than that. So it's a starting point. Goes together reasonably well. Can't see it creating any major issues. All right, a bit of an update on where we are. Interior is all done. Um, well, reasonably done. In the main assembly phase now, I've applied the sealant, I uh, the filler, I've used super glue, I've used Deluxe Products, uh, Perfect Putty, and I've also used Mr. Surface and my usual combination. Uh, gaps aren't too bad on this. I see one or two points I might have to address around here. I'm going to hit it with the, um, to me a grey just to look at get a better view of the main seams um, and then rework them and then I'll have to do some re-riveting and uh, re-scribing the canopy areas I'm gonna first though hit with the interior green um, before I do anything else and then start applying the other layers going together reasonably well no major issues um, or not that I've feel so far. Um, it does need a lot of test fitting. It does need a little bit of rework in places, but nothing too excessive. It's uh, 
certainly easier work than a lot of the manufacturers kits I uh, build so having fun with it that's for sure um, I've got the base ready I've got this piece from Hobbycraft a bit of brass rod and that goes in there so it'll sit like that that sort of angle so happy with the direction this is going in um, it did need quite a bit of sanding trimming <coughs> the engine nacelles were a bit messy and uh, this diameter here had to be taken down in order to get the cowlings to fit that was a, a little bit of work I've got to say honestly the uh, masking was a bit of a headache but that's understandable with this kind of uh, canopy and uh, the nose and tail glazing as well the, f the crew figures are in there I think I could have put a bit more in the cockpit by way of detailing but yeah um, it seems quite a spacious environment anyway so yeah um sink this model was noticeable for its sink marks so those are present here and if these i think could show up again um when i hit it with a spray so i may have to put another layer of something down i can still feel it here that one's okay that one's present and uh hopefully hitting it with gray will show that up also really not sure how this fuselage seam is um, it feels smooth uh, but again, that's why we hit it with a, uh, a spray coat just to make sure it's uh, okay. Low fuse large. I think there may be more issues around there. Um, not too worried about the fit of the Bombay doors. They look okay to me. So really now we're just on the uh, seam checking phase. Um, yeah. I'm happy with the direction this is going in. I'm happy with the way it's going. It doesn't feel like I've had to do anything too excessive on it. Um, so that's where we are. And we'll take a look at it after we've hit it with some spray. Right. I hit it with the um, XF71 cockpit um, green IJN. Um main reason is that that would be the color for the framework as well and it was a perfectly adequate color i mean for the canopy frame uh it was perfectly adequate color for helping to see uh where i needed to do more sanding there were some ridges and i think that was may well have been due to the use of my use of super glue so i wasn't entirely happy there hit that with good old wet and dry so dipped in some water give it a sand so took it back on the main areas where it needs it I noticed I had managed to put a flat on the nose and canopy. I'm going to have to address the um, gap here around the nose glazing. That's going to have to be filled. Uh, I'm not think I. Mm, <coughs> I'm not sure what I'm. I. I might work some Deluxe Products uh, putty into that one. I think that's going to be the best one for that. Um, super glue would work, but if there's any crack in there, I really risk fogging up the canopy badly. Um, so yeah, that worked. Quite happy with that. Um, it worked quite well and uh, showed me where I need to just tidy that up. And it also gave me that necessary first coat on the... Uh, canopy on the uh, gla on the, for the glazing frames as well and if there was some spray onto the inside uh, it it's less has less of an impact because well, frankly it's a uh, interior color bit of a dodgy fit here on the on uh, the main canopy but as it's going to be a dark color it's not going to show up that much I didn't fancy taking that down but I suppose I could have been done with shims and some other work, but I might have to fill up that gap there as well. So, that was just a quick uh, summary from where we were there. I've just hit it with a uh, Tamiya XF71 uh, all over, using that as a base coat, which seems quite 
reasonable to me uh, as being an interior color it's probably very close to the Japanese uh, chromate uh, green so it'll uh, it seemed like a reasonable color to use uh, for a base um, I'm now going to have a go at a bit of uh, pre-shading using um, overlaying a mesh seeing how that goes or doing it with the uh, stretched out or teased out pad like this so that may be a, actually a little bit easier tease that out and then use that as a filter for some pre-shading uh, place that over there and just airbrush through it I think that might work a little bit better than that mesh to be honest um, and I'll do it in a much lighter tone because the tone on top is going to be the um, the uh, Japanese the JN green so I'm going to use that as the main tone to go over this um, so I want something that's going to create a little bit more color variation and we'll see how that works out or we'll see what works out for a filter right I've hit it did the pre-shading this time I just actually freeballed it with the white put down the uh, grey lower surfaces I'm now going to mask off and uh, do the dark green upper surfaces and you can see there just freehanding it to create the variation yeah I've gone overboard on these panel lines uh, I might keep that ridge a little bit darker because it's a fairly dark top surface and that's a good way of um hiding certain things so that's the scheme we're working to um, and I'm going to be clobbering it with the uh, JN uh, green so that's where we're going now and we're just going to see what happens here we are hit it uh, with the paints, um, lower surfaces, maybe the shade of grey is a little bit light, dark, but not too worried. Um, got to do the yellow on the leading edges. Uh, yeah, there's a fit issue there with the canopy, but again, not overly worried. I might be able to scrape it back a bit, but it's not a horrendous issue. Um, so I used um, on the green upper surfaces, I got the base color down. I then um, used filtering through this uh, with a couple of lighter tones. One, first one shade lower, then the next shade lower. And that just took things up a little bit, which I'm, I'm quite happy with the effect. It's um, given the kind of variation I was looking for, um, it seems to me to be fairly natural. Um, the lower surfaces, not too heavily, not too heavy with the grey, so the uh, pre-shading there is showing through a bit. Um, I might hit it with a panel line wash, but now it really needs to be uh, sealed up with a... Um, a coat of Johnson's clear before I do the, the next layers I just want to put some protection over this because it's got I, it's got the nice matte texture and I'm happy with the finish and the variation um, not too happy about this step here and I should have picked that up before it's typical of me that I carry once I get start on a path I carry on with things so yeah a bit of a step issue there but um, I didn't want to damage the canopy frame um, 
sometimes if you do the scraping you start losing that definition so yeah as it is I've already put a bit of a flat on the nose so the main, main thing now is to start um, getting some of the other colours done I, d I wasn't happy with the overdone uh, panel lines there so I actually th took them back a little bit with light sanding and that just took back to that the uh, green lower layer which as that would be like the chromate green I'm not no I think that's fine by me you know I don't think that needs that's so much of an issue so yeah overall I think we're heading in the right direction with the Johnson's clear on I can put the uh, decals on and then when the decals are on we'll start hitting it with the um, uh, some filtered uh, metallics so that's the part, path we're taking actually you know as doing this as a sort of a like a continuous run on the painting I'm reasonably happy with this so uh, we'll see what happens next right. the decals are on um, I'm going to be honest with you I've never had decals that were so reluctant to come off the backing uh, sheet the numbers wouldn't and I left them soaking must be nearly an hour and they still haven't the original numbers haven't come on so the ones I found were just some spares I had in my decal stash I'm not sure if they're right for the unit or for the aircraft type but they're representative which is near enough for me uh, decals settled down quite well uh, I've used microset and microsol but they were difficult to position um, both sides the um, yellow on the leading edges was meant to be decals and I'm glad I painted it instead I think it would have been a pain in the ass backside to put on to say the least so that's been painted so now I'm going to seal it up and uh, set about uh, some more um, filtered uh, weathering so seal it up with another coat of Mr. Surfacer that will pr protect things uh, protect the uh, decals and then we'll go again now working on uh, chipping and uh, tonal variation and get some metal chipping in using the uh, filtered uh, technique so reasonably happy with the way it's going um, it seems to look okay to me few issues here and there but it's uh, once the chipping is done and that's how it is. We'll look, I'll look at uh, putting in the exhaust stains. Reason being is that the carbon staining would be over the uh, paint chipping, just with emissions from the exhaust. So that's going to be the uh, next step. So it's gone through. I've done the filtering on it. Um, and adjusting it and sometimes taking it back as well so I'm actually reasonably happy with this now it's been sealed up with another coat of Johnson's clear in preparation for uh, Flory Pro model and that's going to be especially necessary on the underside where it, with the grey it needs something to help it uh, kick off but yeah I think we're heading in the right direction with this most of the weathering I try to focus on the leading edges um, on the wear and tear varied it a bit so it's a bit patchy which is the aim and I think the decals are quite effectively blended in so that was with the filtered air brushing then taking it back and sometimes repeating it so on to the next stage so just put on a coat of um, Tamiya flat clear as a final seal off and to basically take any gloss out of it so this is it now done weathered uh, sealed up I've got to put no I've got to take off the masking put on the aerial and um, so sort I of can finish off the engines I've kept these cowlings removable um, reasonably happy with how it's gone 
So I think it captures what it's supposed to be. And yeah. That seems to be okay to me now. Um I must <laughs> deny I've there was other stuff I should, should have been doing today, and I just lost myself in doing this. Absolutely thoroughly enjoyed it. I don't normally weather that heavily. Um, I do some weathering, but not a huge amount. And um, because so many of my aircraft are natural metal finish, I just, I must profess, I kind of went to town on this one. So, hopefully, this looks okay for what it is. Um, uh... Yeah. So, being also while while I've been waiting for this to dry in the layers, I've been working on the base. So, painted it white, applied some polyfiller, gap filler, you know, not model filler, but wool filler, which I'm now allowing to dry. I sanded in a flat. So, in this space, I'm going to put uh, like a little plastic plinth painted silver with a hinamaru on that so that's going to go in there just as an offset this base is going to get painted blue varnished dry brushed i'm going to take a bit of uh, sanding paper just to create some um texture between the uh, wave peaks so yeah and that'll just give it hopefully some impression of flying over water well, that's the idea anyway. It just needs a little bit of work um, on that. So, that's the base. So, that's going to be mostly blue. I'm not sure about the brass rod, whether I leave it brass or painted like a neutral grey. I don't know. Um, or white. We'll see. Not not sure about that yet. So, some progress on the base as well. Here we have it, the finished um, KI-76. Now, I know this is a little bit of a jump, because the past few days I really threw myself into this. Uh, part, a fair bit of the work was this space, which, as you can see here, has been sculpted up for the CFX. I put in the Hinamaru on a... <laughs> maybe fairly poor imitation of a uh, metallic background with some panel lines and rivets uh, added to it. I'm not sure how clear those are. You can just about see them there now. Um, the base I sculpted with a uh, wall filler and then progressively layered up with various tones of blue and uh, Johnson's clear in a few spray coat layers and then dry brushed as well to pick up wave top details that kind of thing so I'm reasonably happy with the way that's turned out uh, it the white background was just to provide the white frame was just to provide some contrast so we're taking white dark then the pale surface of the aircraft and the dark surface of the aircraft just a series of contrasting colors that's the theory anyway so, the weathering done on the aircraft, that went okay, seal, and then hit everything with the uh, coat of uh, Tamiya matte. I think I could have kept this as a gloss. I don't know if matte was the best approach on this. Prop discs were just made out of thin plastic. Originally, I was going to use uh, thinner clear, but my circle cutter, I think it's just worn out, really struggled with it. Um, seems to work okay if I'm cutting... Um, normal plastic card out but this this just uh, sorry that's my wife talking to someone in the phone in the garden um, so this um, fairly thin plastic but I think they worked okay for what they are and I used yellow pencil to create the outer limits of the prop disc the aerial again was fishing wire, another bloody nightmare to use. I never get on with this, even with the best will in the world, and it always seems to lead to a, a final, a last minute cock up on the job. Uh, and in this case, it was I had some super glue burst from the tube and ran down the side of the fuselage, and it was clean up. 
and all the rest of it. Always something like that happens at the end of every build. So when I hit the end phase, I'm kind of just waiting to see what's going to go wrong. Um, I could have done better filling around the nose. That doesn't look like it's sufficiently well blended. So there shouldn't really be a panel line there. Okay, I take that on board. Um, looking at the underside... A reasonable bit of weathering there as well, and the exhaust um, fumes, exhaust lines. Maybe could have gone for a bit heavier, I don't know. Um, it just seems that as it, the underside is less exposed to the rain and the, and the um, sun, I figured the weathering might be a little bit less on the lower surfaces. Um, I don't couldn't really find any decent reference images to tell me about that. So, really, bringing the elements together, um, there we have it. I've gone, as always, for, I like the contrast of a fairly pristine torpedo against a heavily weathered aircraft. Uh, I do like that with having uh, weapons that are quite well kept, whereas the platform may be less so. Um... Yes, there is stuff I could do better on this, and certainly a few issues with the filling, but I'm reasonably happy with the outcome. Uh, so, I don't know which show this will appear at. Um, but, we'll see. Now, um, this is really the first in a series of um, Pacific Theatre builds. So uh, we'll see what's coming up next. I've got a few, quite a few things planned now for a little while. Um, I enjoy doing the base. I must admit that's something I do like is bases on models. They don't really suit the Russian stuff as I've discussed before for various reasons. So um, yeah, this was a fun build. I really did enjoy doing it. I'm reasonably happy with the end result. Reasonably. You should never be too happy. Um, and definitely lessons to learn and things to watch out for a bit more. Prop discs, that's the first time I've done anything like that. Turned out better than I expected, but I can still see the issues with them. Um, but overall, I definitely enjoyed it. Bit of a speed build. I wanted to get this done uh, before July and before the um, Saturday Night Crash uh, group build kicks in. And uh, also... As I have to, as my working hours uh, go up now quite considerably uh, for a number of reasons. As I come to. So, there you have it. There'll be a series of photos. That's another view of the underside. So, I am still thinking that if. My mate from the uh, Wrexham uh, War Games Club does have his collection tin for the Royal British Legion on the table. I would still say with this, if somebody's willing to make a donation of at least £20 to the Royal British Legion at one of the shows where they see this, they can have this um, model for themselves. It's So yeah, I'm going to stick with that. Um, if you see it, I predict, and if, if Telford happens this year, I'm still not sure if somebody can fill me in on that. Um, a 20 quid donation to the Royal British Legion, and as long as the show model is at Telford, um, and the model is yours. Okay. Too big of me to bash something. I thought the glue was holding it. Oh.